States of emergency have been declared all over the United States. Schools are closing. The big daddy of particle accelerators, the one and only Large Hadron Collider, LHC, is powering back up for the first time in years. What's happening next week that is both exciting and frightening for the world? Keep watching because that's what we're exploring today on PMP, Pristine Mega Projects. So here's the scoop. Back in December 2018, the LHC at CERN, Switzerland, took a breather to spruce things up a bit. You know, some upgrades here, some improvements there. And boy, did it take its sweet time more than three years. But hey, good things come to those who wait, right? Fast forward to today. Now, the countdown is on for the grand comeback with Run 3 scheduled for the 8th of April. Why the 8th of April? It just so happens that this is the same day as the total solar eclipse. Is this a cosmic coincidence? After almost two years of hibernation, CERN's now ready to fire up the LHC once again. It's like waking up a sleeping giant. Only this time, it's on a mission to uncover the universe's deepest secrets like dark matter and dark energy that secretly power the universe. How does it work? Well, as CERN puts it, the Large Hadron Collider is the most powerful accelerator in the world. And it boosts particles, such as protons, which form all the matter we know. Accelerated to a speed close to that of light, they collide with other protons. These collisions produce massive particles, such as the Higgs boson or the top quark. And the best part? Scientists have already rolled up their sleeves and gotten down to business upgrading their tech for the past three years. More on that later in this video. So, the $4 billion LHC machine is about to become ground zero for some serious cosmic exploration. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons now. Liking and subscribing really helps the algorithm let others know about this channel. I'm releasing more videos in April than ever before, so smash that notification bell to get updated when the next video comes out. Also, comment your thoughts about April 8th below. Why all the panic? I mean, we've had solar ECI IPs before, right? I read every single comment and replied too. Thanks. Now grab your lab coats and strap in, folks, because things are about to get seriously mind-blowing. It's like a blockbuster trilogy with Run 1 occurring from 2009 to 2013 and Run 2 happening from 2015 to 2018. But now the total solar eclipse has set the stage for the return. We are about to witness Run 3, which promises serious particle smashing action once again starting on the 8th of April. And the plot thickens. While the LHC was taking its hiatus, it ran into a bit of a snag thanks to the sickness that we all know affected the world in 2020. Yep, even the world's most powerful particle accelerator wasn't immune to delays from that situation. Despite the hiccups, the wizards at CERN didn't waste any time. They used the downtime to soup up the LHC with some serious upgrades that will be used this year. These upgrades are all geared towards unlocking the secrets of next generation science. Let's break it down a bit. The LHC works its magic by hurling particles like protons to crazy speeds. We're talking nearly the speed of light here. Then bam, they smash into each other like cosmic bumper cars. It's a collision course of epic proportions. And get this, the LHC is no slouch. It churns out hundreds of millions of these collisions every single second. That's some serious particle pummeling power right there. But why all the fuss? Well, at these extreme energies, scientists are basically playing cosmic detectives. They're hunting down elusive phenomena, like dark matter and dark energy. It's like trying to catch a glimpse of the universe's best kept secrets. Stuff that's predicted to exist, but hasn't shown its face yet. Let's dive a bit deeper into the heart of CERN's epic quest for cosmic secrets. It's like a giant game of subatomic billiards with astronomical stakes. So here's the scoop. The LHC isn't just your run-of-the-mill particle accelerator. It's the gold standard, the heavyweight champ of the scientific world. And with these souped-up upgrades, it's ready to flex its muscles like never before. First up on the upgrade list, boosting the power of those injector machines. Back in run two, they were already pushing particles up to a staggering 6.5 terelectron volts. TV. But now? Oh, they've cranked it up to a jaw-dropping 6.8 terelectron volts. TV. That's like giving a single proton 
the kinetic energy of a flying mosquito. Don't let the size fool you. That's a whole lot of punch. But here's the kicker. Ramping up that energy isn't a walk in the park. It takes some serious magnet training for those superconducting magnets to get back into the groove after their downtime. We're talking about 12,000 individual tests just to get them up to speed. That's dedication, folks. Now why all the fuss? Well, with these higher energy collisions, we're talking potential game changers. Think of it as cracking open the universe's playbook, one collision at a time. Now let's dive into some fascinating history about CERN, shall we? So picture this, it's December 1951, Paris. Representatives from various countries are gathered at a UNESCO meeting. What's on the agenda? Well, they're talking about creating a European Council for Nuclear Research. Sounds fancy, right? Anyway, after some discussions, they adopt the first resolution about setting up this council. And just two months later, BAM! They sign an agreement giving birth to the Provisional Council. And guess what? That's when the acronym CERN comes into play. Pretty snazzy, huh? Now here's the juicy part. They had 18 months to formalize the whole deal and come up with what we now know as the CERN Convention. Talk about getting things done in a hurry. Fast forward to today, and CERN isn't just about poking around the nucleus anymore. Nope, their research has taken us to mind-bending depths of understanding about matter. We're talking particle physics, folks. And because of this focus, CERN's lab is often dubbed the European Laboratory for Particle Physics. Cool, right? The story of CERN keeps getting more intriguing. So it's June 1953, and after some back and forth, the final draft of the CERN convention is locked in. Guess what? 12 new member states are all on board, signing up for this wild ride. This convention isn't just any old document. It's laying down the ground rules for how these countries will chip in to fund CERN's adventures. Plus, it's setting the tone for things like open access and how the whole organization is structured. Think of it like the blueprint for the CERN we know today. Now, signing on that dotted line, it's like lighting a rocket under CERN. Momentum shoots through the roof. They waste no time. Staff start flooding in, architects get busy, and plans start taking shape. They're not messing around. Fast forward to July 1955. Felix Bloch, the big cheese as CERN's director general, grabs a shovel and lays down the first foundation stone. Talk about making it official. And from there? Well, CERN doesn't just meet expectations. It blows them out of the water. Those early dreamers, the scientists with stars in their eyes, they set out to create an international hub for groundbreaking research. And boy, did they deliver. CERN becomes the place where technology and imagination collide, pushing the boundaries of what we know about the universe. You're at CERN, right? They're on a mission to unlock the universe's deepest secrets. I'm talking about figuring out what makes everything tick, from the tiniest particles to the grandest galaxies. And guess what? They've got some seriously cool tools to help them do it, like these mind-blowing particle accelerators that basically smash atoms together to reveal the universe's building blocks. Now, rewind back to 1954. That's when CERN was born. Since then, it's become this epicenter of global teamwork. Scientists from all corners of the globe gather here pooling their brain power to tackle the big questions of the cosmos. It's like the United Nations of Science. Their mission is pretty simple, really. First off, they're all about top-notch research in fundamental physics. They're not just scratching the surface, they're diving deep into the mysteries of existence. Then there's their commitment to keeping things green. Yep, even in the world of high-tech science, they're all about sustainability. Go Team Earth! But it's not just about scientists in lab coats. CERN is like this melting pot of cultures and ideas, bringing people together from all walks of life to push the boundaries of human knowledge. And hey, they're not leaving the next generation behind. Nope, they're busy training up the next batch of brainiacs. Physicists, engineers, you name it. Plus, they're all about getting everyone pumped about science, from school kids to grandma and grandpa. Now, let's talk goals. They've got this superstar accelerator called the LHC, it's like the Ferrari of accelerators, and they're revving it up to full throttle to uncover even more secrets of the universe. They're keeping things fresh with a diverse lineup of scientific programs, catering to all sorts of interests within the science community. And they're not stopping at the LHC. Nope, 
they're already gearing up for whatever comes next in the world of high energy physics. But it's not just about science, folks. CERN is also out there advocating for science-based policies, bridging the gap between academia and industry, and inspiring the next generation of scientists and engineers. So there you have it. CERN isn't just a place where scientists do science. It's a global community on a mission to unlock the mysteries of the universe, one atom at a time. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, because I'm releasing more videos in April than ever before, and you don't want to miss them. I'll see you in the next video. Stay curious.